Hi everybody, I'm Stephen Bauman and I'm gonna be judging the next Proco Challenge. This one's gonna take place during the month of August and it's gonna be focused on self-portrait drawings. So be sure to check out the Proco TV channel on Instagram on August 1st so you can figure out all the rules to this competition and also all the prizes that you can win. I wanna say as well, Best of luck to everybody that's going to send in their submissions and I'm really looking forward to seeing all of the artwork that you come up with. Hey everyone, Cynics here and I am very blessed to be judging the Proco Challenge for July. If you don't know, I am a fellow YouTuber and an art teacher who focuses a little bit more on design theory and a little bit more on the concept art side of things. But I'm excited to see what you guys have done for your space mission illustrations. I'm a big fan of space, personally. I love all sci-fi books from Arthur C. Clarke to Three Body Problem. Uh, all those really hard sci-fi, so um, big fan of space-related TV shows, movies. You ever seen the old Solaris, the old Russian movie? That's that's a really weird one. Let's just jump into it. Let's see what you guys have done. There are so many amazing entries in here. You guys are quite wonderful and there is so much diversity in style which personally i don't even see that much i, I usually just see concept art kind of more semi-realism a lot of that stuff but you guys got styles everywhere so i'll just be quickly going through these i've looked at them but now i just want to take a quick gander at some specifics i will be doing my best not to go into full art teacher mode and critique things because it's very easy like look at this one now i could talk about how you know they did a good job showing that there is actually no ambient lighting in space so that's why you get those very harsh shadows on planets and things um it's space is the one place where you can really get those just super harsh black mike mignola style shadow effects on everything you can see this little uh this little hot dog wiener mobile here um, I like these simple obtuse shapes. One thing I will say about cars, very important to make the suspension and the wheels the most believable detailed part. And then you can get away. These styles, like the style of the body and everything, looks great. You just need that believability in the suspension a little bit more. This is what I think it is. We have it. The winner, everyone. <laughs> We have Marshall Vandruff himself with Stan hiding from the most amazing alien the world has ever seen. The Proko Geiger kangaroo. This thing is beautiful. Look at it. It's got a wagon on it too. Wow, this is art to the next level. I, I think you win the honorable mention for uh, funniest, best humor, best use of Proko kangaroo meme. This made my day. Thank you, Yan. You are truly a saint. Is that... Is that a cactus snail? Because I am here for him, my friend. Cactus snail is life. Cactus snail is love. Look at that little boy. He's got a little tiny mouth. Oh, he's so happy. I am all here. This guy's taking a picture. I would be doing the same. His shell could have been a little bit better, but... Just concept wise, cactus nail, it's the best thing I've ever seen. So once again, we got a ton of good stuff. Got this lovely painting, person staring into the void here. Uh, this looks like Space Dormammu. One thing I'm amazed at is the amount of traditional paintings and stuff. Look at this. I mean, these are all traditional stuff. Traditional has its whole array of difficulties just because Obviously you can't change things. It's harder to fine tune. Things such as compositional values and everything. Sometimes I do feel like traditional stuff will suffer a little bit just from value mapping and the type of stuff that you really adjust when you're working digitally. But I admire it completely. I love it. I really want to talk about this one. Look at that. I'm amazed personally at just the beauty of these grass fields and everything in this space environment. I love this. I could stare at little patchworks of fields and farms and trees uh, forever. So wonderful use of hue variation. Look at those yellows, those browns, and then you go into the cool shadow side of things. Really like this one. I think the planet might be a bit high key. It's a bit, it's a bit bright, but also this spaceship. Sadly, they're a little bit too simple in their shapes. A little bit too much thin stuff. 
um, you want to kind of bulk up some of those shapes. Find that nice, appealing, obtuse shape. It makes the silhouette of them just a little bit awkward. Let's see, what else? I really want to mention this one real fast. Um, just because I love this hollowed out planet with the star in the middle, whatever it might be. Uh, mainly, that's an idea, you know, I've probably seen before. Um, but this way you showed it with this weird texture, I don't know, I've just never seen anything quite like that. And I really like it. Uh, unfortunately, I feel like this satellite is just kind of placed in a very distant way where it doesn't really take advantage of three-dimensional space as much as it could. Um, but, you know, it happens. Tiber Eokis, I don't know how to say your name. Uh, just watch your focal points. We got a lot of uh, focus being placed on this one through both the cool and warms, uh, but also just contrast is highest here, where it feels like the storytelling it should actually be on this shuttle and this alien lurking behind the corner. Um, but it actually took me a while to actually notice that stuff just because the some of the, the way that focal points are built. This is lovely. Lovely little gas planet. Nice speed painting. Good colors, good values. Not super narrative, more of a look and feel piece, but I like it. One thing I'm always looking for in art, and this was really brought about by my... I, I taught like little kids for a year um, teaching little kids art and one thing i noticed very quickly is that they have this tendency to fill out the canvas very evenly nothing overlaps and there's just kind of something something everywhere there's empty space they put a thing and they never overlap and they just kind of spread everything out and it traumatized me so um anytime i see that kind of stuff in art i just i instantly i'm like no no you got to get away from that we gotta have ratios of empty space. We gotta have things that are overlapping, really creating depth and everything. If things feel like they're puzzle pieces shoved in, squeezed together without ever overlapping, that triggers some little kid PTSD in me. Lovely, lovely piece. But we get like a little bit of that effect in this one where everything's got its own little space, which is too bad because I really like the designs going on in this one. And this one also, I don't know why the earth is being squashed like a little ellipse here. Um, but a lot of the details are just kind of so evenly placed in their own unique spots all throughout things. A little, little bit of overlap. A little, little, little tiny bit of overlap. So I look for that. I see that all kinds of places. I'm like, eh, it's just a little bit everything, you know, just equally placed. You know, oh, the fence just happens to be in its own unique spot. One thing to also look for just when you're making your compositions is try not to place your cameras in these very, I don't know, detached strange positions you'll have the camera and it'll be like just awkwardly floating at this high three-fourths angle um like it's isometric or something and it just makes us feel as the viewer a little bit detached from everything going on so i'll be looking for that as well look at all of these progress shots we got concept art so you know i gotta check that out 3d stuff i think this is the final piece now i will say this the the fact that you made these 3D models that that like takes care of so much of your um, kind of perspective issues, all the complicated stuff. You need to go in on these 3D models and figure out the most dynamic, most interesting composition because you, you use 3D, but then the final one, once again, it's a little bit of a detached camera angle. We're not really using the perspective in our full advantage. I feel like. We're not interacting with it as much as we could. So if you're going to go 3D, go hyper dynamic with the angle. Get in there with your 3D camera and really thoroughly find something that makes everything feel very extreme. You could have played with scale, brought the camera down real tiny. All kinds of crazy stuff you could have done. Uh, but nonetheless, good effort, good uh, pipeline all together. Wonderful little Amazon Prime robot. I think that's, is that little baby Jeff Bezos in there? Jeff Bezos the fourth, maybe? Uh, he looks bald. He's in there. Um, a very corporate outlook on the future. There's this shelf life to capitalism. It needs to be reset once in a while, which means no corporation will last that long. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I like that. Anytime there's like something very definite, like a logo or something, it gives, gives the viewer something to really latch on to and kind of bring in the believability. Imagine this without the logo here, then it's just kind of more meandering. But with the logo, really sets us in here. He crashed for our errors. 
Is this like a cult of Elon Musk reference? Is that a Tesla being launched into space? But personally, I am not a huge Elon Musk fan. He's no one to be admired and worshipped. He's just another businessman. You guys are diving into all my corporate hot takes. More Musk fanboyism, but I will allow it just because you rendered this metal so very well. Look at that. Metal is, you know, at its shiniest, just a reflection of the environment. And you handled that like a champ. So good job on colors and values overall. Um, I wish the shape of this top of this thing was just a little more exciting. Is this another muskian? Another musket? What is the word for a musk fanboy? Um, welcome to Musk. Until 2171, the name Mars. It's probably true and it hurts. It hurts a little bit. Ooh, this one. Really nice just illustration. Look at that. Good isolation. Just captures that isolated feel. Now, it doesn't so much feel like an actual space mission, more like a, a just a piece about space, but I love I love it. Good composition, good tension, good open spaces. Um, doesn't get too busy. Kind of sells the vibe. Good vibes, I guess is the best way to describe it. Schlerb art. I know Schlerb. Yeah, this is nice. Very Sparth-esque speed painting. If you don't know, I am a huge fan of Sparth. His sci-fi art, he's been like the legend of sci-fi art, in my opinion, when it comes to digital painting. Yeah, good piece. Very nice ship design. Simple. It might be getting a little bit, um, you know, wavering in its like commitment to the lighting scheme. I feel like it's a little, little subtle in its decision on the shadows and everything. Um, so the values could have been a little bit more extreme. Um, you're also getting a little carried away with the wires, which is something I, I relate to so hard because I used to do it in every every piece of art I ever made, just wires everywhere. Um, but now I've realized that, you know, that many small shapes takes away from the overall image. You want to really minimize your small shapes, you know, get your ratio going, get that uh, golden ratio, big, medium, small. I do want to point this one out, Sadiq, Look at those fancy renderings, traditional. This looks like charcoal, maybe? I don't know. I am not a traditional expert, but man, you really handled those reflections in the, in the space helmet visor really well. Good loss of detail in the shadows. I know I'm a big fan of that. Um, that's one thing that traditional figurative artists do really well, and I'm trying to make sure concept artists pick up on that it also is just loss of detail in the shadows. So nicely done. Weird little hitchhiker in space. That's a weird one, but I'm I'm here for it. The X1, I don't know how to say that, gelato. Yes, some kind of giant storage container in space, uh, which is, you know, realistic, relatable. By the year 2500, there's no doubt that the amount of Funko Pops in the world will require external storage on a giant space station. Ooh, I like this ship. This ship is very Homeworld-esque. If you don't know about Homeworld, it is an amazing RTS game. Came out ooh, years and years ago. But the art direction and the concept art for it is amazing. So go check out Homeworld concept art if you want to see good space concept art. Really cool stuff. So that's what this one's kind of reminding me of. And just in general, really, really strong rendering design stuff going on in here. Good, nice, simple composition. Feels pretty good. We might have been able to go once again darker on the shot. There's no ambient lighting in space. What is all that? That that wouldn't show up. Come on, you're, you're hurting my super hard sci-fi techie brain with all that one. Um, so watch that. But overall, looking nice. This one by Pedro. Oof, that is, that is quite a beauty. I'm not the biggest fan of this like perfectly symmetrical layout because I just feel like it's, it's not as exciting for a brain uh, as it could be, but man, there's like some nice UI elements. The visuals on this, really good. And this like kind of spaceship uh, command deck with all the pilots and the commander, whatever, looking at over this uh, anomaly in space. I gotta try to pick a top three at some point, and that's, that is gonna be hard, because there's all kinds of good stuff going on in here. Ooh, oof, this is lovely. 
amazingly lovely rendering skills going on here. The metal on this looks great. The posing, the gesture, the vibe. Oh, that is, that is good stuff. Now, I do think this planet in the background maybe got a little bit too evenly dense in this texture of the clouds and everything. Uh, we got the little man coming out of the robot. Um, once again, great cool tones, warm tones, balancing them. Might be a little bit heavy on the density of these shapes, but uh, I'm okay. I like the interaction with the environment here. Um, really good stuff. Just nice, nice kind of comfortable uh, narrative gesturing. Um, so I'm digging it. I love it. Good job. Really solid piece. All right, what do we got? Nelson Design. This is a whole lot of work. Traditional stuff going on here. So yeah, it's a little bit evenly spaced in all of its stuff, but I do like the kind of educational process stuff going on in there. So really good. Just, now it's just a matter of, you know, like don't put everything out there, like edit back, try to slow things down. Don't put out all the information, like kind of curate it a little bit more. Taking stuff out is just as important as adding stuff in, but that looks really nice. And this, this just reminds me of the magic school buzz. Where's, where's Miss Brizzle? This one's jumping out a little bit. Good uh, kind of sense of danger. We got this weird scorpion robot in here. Uh, I will say this. I know I got to keep interjecting with my little art tips. Um, this whole dark is a little bit too dark uh, for everything else in that area and that distance. Doesn't sink into the environment as much as it could. Um, so don't go that dark with the dark, especially if the darks around it and the environment aren't that dark. Dark, dark, to dark, dark, dark. But otherwise, good narrative stuff going on in there. What is this? This looks like Cthulhu Man in space. Very retro feeling on this rendering, especially this gun thing back here. Just in general, it has this kind of throwback, I don't know what year, 70s vibe? Very interesting. I like this hyper dense. Uh, personally, I'm not a render junkie. I've never gotten into making anything super dense. Um, that is quite a dense little city back here. Cool. What is this? Is this Santa in space? We got Space Santa. Ooh, we got iterations. Got a little concept artist going on here. Uh, I will say, I think you went with the best iteration. It's kind of tricky to say. They are feeling a little bit like the Homer Mobile. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna let it slide because it has a nice, wholesome, happy, fun vibe to it. Uh, yeah, look at that. He's delivering presents to all the little astronaut children out there in space. Very cool, very fun. I do feel like Santa could have been a little bit chunkier. He's not quite as jolly as he could be. He's looking a little svelte. I do like the reindeer and their fancy, fancy little spacesuits. Uh, this makes Santa a little bit more jolly, if you know what I mean. Oh, look at that. Once again, awesome style, almost like a children's book kind of illustration. Very fun though. I love the colors. Once again, I love seeing colors in space. It's one of those things that, you know, you don't want to overlook. You don't want to make everything black. Uh, you want to bring in some of those nebulous colors, even if it's not super realistic. It just makes everything so much more fun. I'm, I'm a little concerned about the disembodied head, but I like his little cat eared spacesuit. Like it, good job. Got some trippy stuff going on in here. That is interesting. What is going on here? This is what I think it is. How dare you? How dare you bring your Ethan Becker cultist mentality to the Proco challenge? Even got his broken cigarette, his little American glasses. Proco, I had to look up your name. I didn't even know who you were. Uh, I will say accurate. It doesn't feel like he fills out this spacesuit, which is, that's accurate. But overall, good job. Birth of Adam. Is that the name? Man, I can't even remember the name. You know, the one with the fingers and the touch in. This one. That is some pretty artistry going on. Very cool style. Good graphic, graphic design presentation on that one. This one is jumping to me. What is this? This is by Koz Kozlik. Koz Kozlik? I don't know how to say these names, but man, that is beautiful. I have to say, uh, I like the concept. I like where the camera is placed. I like that we have the astronauts being nice and big. In the background, we got this little tiny civilization in here. Now it's a bit, you know, maybe you could say monochromatic and just, you know, tone and stuff. Um, but the more I look at this one, the more I like it. 
It's a style that's very different than anything I would do. It's uh, traditional, which got to have some traditional in it. But mainly, look at this effects going on and how they rendered and showed all these forms. I don't know if those will read as well in camera, but there is so much nice little line work stuff going on in there. And I like these simple little fun playground aliens as well. Look at that. Look at those good contour following lines everywhere. I'm feeling it. I'm enjoying it. Okay, we got a pretty massive epic piece going on in here. Yeah, very cool. I'm a sucker for robots. You know, I love my robots just as much as anyone. Now, I will say the thing I love most, and this is very silly and arbitrary, is just the, the distortion, the deformation on the shadow as it goes over the rocks and everything. I love that. It feels like it actually sits in the environment because of it. And this one by Justin, feeling very, uh, very nice, very traditional, maybe a little bit on the safer side, and safer in the sense that I feel like I've seen these kind of designs just a little bit before, but actually feels grounded in reality. Speaking of grounded in reality, oh, we got we got a war going on here. We got FedEx. This is they're probably attacking that giant Amazon Prime robot. But man, look at that perspective. I dig the ambition here. I'm a big fan of crazy dynamic camera angles, so that is cool. It's like dragons flying around on this planet sci-fi fantasy dragon worlds i love it john here put forth some effort now i will say i like the design you came to this weird gyroscopic space station it's a little bit distracted by the just the value mapping they're kind of getting a lot of thin little tiny shapes in the overall vibe let's see the final yeah that's i i really like some of the elements going on in here and it's, you put it in a good position the layout feels like it could have been really solid, but you definitely busied it up with the amount of values. You got to give it the squint test. If you don't know, the squint test is very important to every art piece. It's where you squint really hard at it, um, and it kind of blocks out a lot of the information, and you just see the value mapping. It just kind of lets you see values, and I do it constantly because it's actually extremely useful to just quickly check your values. So when I give this one the old squint test, um, unfortunately, there's just a lot of chaos being driven around. It, it doesn't really read the composition as well as it could. But that's a really good design for a kind of believable space station. Oh, I like this. It's a very subtle rendering on this gummy worm, <laughs> uh, but I like it. What else we got? Is this a taco truck in space? Oh, he's got his permit to sell food on the roach coach in space. Oh, this is quite nice. It's like a whole space station built into the giant creature. Uh, they have that kind of thing in, you know, Marvel comics with their giant titans in space. I forget what they're called. Also kind of gives me those Peter Moorbacher vibes, which is always a good vibe to have. Very fun, very cool. Now I wish, once again, it could have had a slightly more narrative elements. It's kind of just a look and feel establishing shot. Doesn't necessarily read as space mission, but very cool. Definitely an honorable mention. Henry, with this crazy amount of effort and work going in. Hmm, now the finished image, it does have a very Mike Mignola vibe, personal preference, but I think if you're gonna go for this highly graphic look, you need to stick with more so flat colors and not have like blending and stuff. Um, it's something I would call a little bit of render dissonance. Uh, where you get different rendering styles next to each other and just kind of feels just a, just a little bit off. I think the final result maybe could have been more exciting, but I absolutely love these sketches. Let's finalize your rendering style just a little bit more. Figure out what's going to be the ideal for you. Nice, nice rendering on this little ship. Could have used a little bit more visual library and just a couple of these detail spots, but Overall, looking good. This guy's a little schlumpy. He looks like a homeless astronaut. Not much detail going on in his outfit. It looks a little ill-fitting. But this design, nice rendering. Very clean, very crisp. That is a lot of detail. <laughs> My brain is kind of overloaded when I look at stuff like this. I've never done things, hyper-rendered things, or like super hyper-detailed things. It's an aesthetic that definitely some people enjoy. I'm a little bit on the fence. I like big ratios of detail density in certain spots and the nice, open, relaxing, comfortable areas. I get a little bit of anxiety when I look at 
that much rendering and that much kind of small details going on. But nonetheless, awesome, awesome effort. That much mileage is always going to be a good thing in the long run. Very classic vibe of the Ark spaceship carrying the remnants of our society to unknown futures. What is this? This little pupper has his own little mech suit. Oh, that's that's just a good heartwarming piece right there. Um, not necessarily super space mission-y. Yeah, definitely a cute piece. Now this is interesting. At first glance, I had some minor issues with just the, the quick read. You always want to make sure the quick read is good. But the more I look at this, the more I actually really like this rendering style. It's very confident in its little shapes. This feels like a spaceship flying over maybe an ice planet and this thing is like erupting from it. See, that's the part that's not reading as well as it could. Like. The movement, the vibe on whatever is going on back here feels just a little bit confusing, which is too bad because I the spaceship design, very fun, very unique, very confident in its design. Um, I really like uh, what you're doing overall. Uh, maybe some of the space, the way you showed space back here could have been a little more interesting. I don't know. I, I'm, I can't quite put my finger on the main crit I have for this one. I feel like there's so much good potential to just tighten things up and really get some awesome stuff going on here. So definitely honorable mention going on. What is this? Some kind of Inquisition? It's very uh, Warhammer 40k space Inquisition as stuff. It's telling everyone, shame, shame on you aliens. Obey our religion. We're a little bit detached just in terms of there not being strong foreground elements and feeling like there needs to be just a little bit something, something to sink us into this image a little bit more. You see our focal points, always gonna be faces, contrast. We got like focal point, focal point, focal point here. Unfortunately, all of our focal points are basically the same distance from the viewer, which is something to look out for. Uh, you wanna make sure you're really staggering focal points throughout space and distance, ideally setting them apart. Cause while they're on opposite sides of the canvas, they're at the exact same distance from the viewer of um, these main reads, the main focal points. So that's a little unfortunate. That's something you want to look for when you're deciding on your composition and your camera placement and everything. Nice rendering, uh, nice soft rendering on the face, even the, the hard detail stuff, uh, good design things. I feel like their interaction with this big thing they're sitting on, it's just a little bit awkward. That's what's hurting it, just a little bit. They're kind of sitting on it in a slightly weird spot where it's I don't know, it also feels like it's deforming. It's like a little cushion, a little cushion for their butt. So there's minor issues, but otherwise, you know, I would have made the silhouette of this stuff read a bit more because they're also kind of blending in value-wise. Once again, do the squint test and you can see that the, they're not kind of popping out as much as they could. There's kind of a whole lot of simple uh, chaos that's happening in there. So squint test that thing, make sure you fine tune it a little bit because I feel like there's a lot of a lot of awesome art potential going on in here. What is this one? This one looks great as well, man. Little astronauts exploring this derelict, destroyed world with the overgrowth of plants. Very classic, very awesome. Maybe the, the whites of the helmet are kind of getting lost in the values just a little bit. But yeah, that is looking pretty good. Definitely honorable mention of that. Now, what is this? Explain, explain yourself. We gotta take a close look at this. We got music. You guys probably can't hear it though. It's a little castle thing. It's flying. Wow. Majestic. It's a little UFO. This is definitely winning a prize for most confusing. Also winning the prize for most likely to actually be cake. Because this might literally be cake. I don't know. It feels like I can eat it. I probably shouldn't though, you know, but whatever. Okay, great, good job. I wanna talk about everything. There's so much, so much good confidence going on in this one. Look at those bold choices, hard edges. Nicely done. I don't, I have no idea what's going on. This one, however, I read and I dig it. This is like crazy Muppet throwback. I don't, this feels like underground comics work from like the, 60s or something. I don't know, but I'm 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 here for it. Good job at the rendering. Good job at everything. It's very cohesive in its style. It's 
it's wild it's out there but it's very cool i'm digging it i don't know i don't know if this is top three material because it doesn't really feel like a space mission it feels like just an alien planet best nostalgic underground comic throwback all right cool is that buzz lightyear it's very buzz lightyear-esque reasonable job of like texture differences you could have even upped it a little bit more made this a little bit slimier it's definitely there though there's definitely a vibe of different textures which i love good use of colors too you managed to get a lot of colors in there some would say too many but i think you're doing it just right wow this is once again someone putting in the effort this is a lot of pages of work and notes and design stuff uh, very cool to see Unfortunately, I do feel like the final image gets a little bit overwhelmed by the amount of that, you know, initial stages. But actually, you know what? Now that I look at it, I feel like the main problem is it's very border heavy with all the elements. You can see here, it's a little bit like empty space in the middle and then everything of interest is just kind of forming this border around the edge. So that's a little bit unfortunate compositionally because there's a lot of interesting ideas and stuff going on here. Also, there isn't really a single focal point jumping out. I mean, this one definitely is the main focal point, but there isn't, I'm not really sure what to look at when it comes next. I feel like it should be this part, but it doesn't necessarily have the values to pull that off. Very cool though, I like it. What is this? Is this a Gundam? This looks like Space Gundam. I'm here for Space Gundams. Look at these Gundams, bang, little Gundam boys hanging out back on the shelves. That's cool. Very cool space design. Gets a little bit busy once again. Let some let some shapes have a little bit of breathing room. Focus on pockets of density. A little heavy on some of these wires and things. Oh, I like this a lot. This is like a farming operation in space. Um, very interesting. Kind of has that sci-fi vibe to the patterning on this. Yeah, so many good angular shapes. Very Rob Ruffle-esque in your rock designs. That is that is a deep cut, um, but some of you may know Rob Ruffle. This is great, you know? It's believable. It's a farming operation on asteroids. I like that it's very just has one main idea, but sells the narrative well with like subtlety. Um, you definitely like, you have the little transport ship, you have the little farming combiner in here just harvesting stuff just subtle use of different shapes all right zooming through we're almost at the end here this one i love the setup i love the storytelling got like a person finding a little alien creature and the, oh no the mama is behind though and she's not happy about it I do want to feel a little bit more of the emotion that's going on. It's kind of hard to read. I think I understand it. Some of these thumbnails might have captured it, the emotion better, but then again, I do kind of like the ambition of this one. Oh, that's a tough one, um, but it's it's looking good. Good job, Ben, ben Judd. Nice little environment shot. Once again, well done. Good colors, good control over shapes and everything. Good environment piece. Um, the stars are a little bit evenly spread out. Always look for that. You want to focus on pairs and singles. Like one has a friend, one is alone. That's how you can create a little bit more of a random pattern when it comes to things that need to look random. It's a little pro tip for you guys. <laughs> I'm feeling the vibe on these little drawings. The sketch, it feels like you're finding your tempo. You got a nice tempo going on in your sketches, which is very important for designing. Yeah, there's a nice energy, good line energy, maybe Take a moment once once in a while to slow down just a little bit. Does feel like a little bit all all one speed, all gas, no brakes. Um, but it looks looks pretty good. Let's check out the final here. Yeah, decent composition, decent design on everything. The rendering obviously is hurting it a little bit. It's a little bit unpolished or just like there's a lot of once again, it's not passing the squint test. So the value mapping and everything are getting hurt a little bit. But designs, designs are looking really cool. So really cool designs, just needs a little bit more value mapping on the actual composition. Always be squinting. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a little low contrast for a space scene, but I'm digging the confidence in the folds and everything. Very nicely done. What else we got? Oh man, when I look at this thumbnail, I'm just, personally, I'm just happy that the whole meme of like the always has been with the astronaut shooting the other,
I'm glad that kind of came out after everyone did these these submissions because otherwise I feel like 90% of them would have just been like, man, the planet's, you know, flat. Oh, always has been, you know, whatever it is. That's what vibe I'm getting from this one. Once again, you guys are handling your metals. Camera texture is a little bit unconfident in some of the fabric folds, but that's fine. Let's see, I think we're almost done. We are almost done. What else we got? Got this nice little space station here. It's pretty good. Nice style. Very unique style that I'm not used to, but very cool. Look at that strong perspective going on here. It's almost, feels like it almost wants to be fish-eyed. That's it. We made it. We handled our business. We finished. We are done with everything. Um, just looking back real fast. Man, there were a lot of great things in here. Uh, so just a quick recap for my three finalists. Number three. I really enjoy it. It's simple, it's understated, but it's well done and it tells me a story. I know it's a little different, a little non-traditional. I don't know, it might not have been a common pick, but I definitely, I love just the representation of things. I love the subtle storytelling. I love the realistic vibe, just, you know, farming on asteroids and everything. It just feels good. It feels like they achieved everything and it's got some interesting shape appeal to me. Number two. This one speaks to me. I like the narrative elements, and I like the unique rendering style. I just love the technique of the contour lines on everything, and using different sizes of contour lines to kind of show form and lighting. I just enjoy it. I don't know. It's, it's fun to me. I think it's a really good story, good rendering, just fun all around. Number one. Great metal rendering, great textures, great scene, great cools, great warms. Great gestures, great everything. Yeah, I, I really like that one. Good piece, solid piece. I would like to just, once again, thank all of you people who submitted something. Look at these entries. There's so many good entries in here. Uh, you can always go to Instagram and just search up hashtag Proco Challenge and take a better look at all of them for yourself. Find your own favorites. Follow some new people, make some new friends. Do the social stuff, it's valuable, especially in these quarantine times. Uh, I feel like I personally need to bring in my own special guest, so I'll be right back. Fits the space cat, look at you, they're so cute. All right, so once again, big thank you to everyone that participated, you guys are awesome. And a big, huge thank you to Proko for having me and letting me participate in this. Uh, me, me and Sochi here, this is a good time. Well, <laughs> Okay, get your butt out of my thing. You know, if you want to check out my YouTube channel, I got some fun design theory things. If you're into concept art and design, um, I like to really get into that stuff. Great, uh, I'll see everyone. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy, uh, goodbye. This video was brought to you by uh, the Proco Skull, a delightful tool, useful for everyone. Cats love it, parents approved. Ow, you're scratching, okay, bye.